Hi everybody and welcome to our program. My name is Tim Farrell and I'm here today sponsored by Teleflora to bring to you some ideas for some areas that we can create for weddings that make these picture perfect areas for our brides and grooms to have. We all know these days that, that weddings are smaller, but brides still have the budgets to do some incredible things at their wedding because they want the pictures from that day to be just lifelong memories. So throughout the program, I'm gonna share with you a couple of ideas that I've incorporated and I've used in my shop that are really easy mechanics, but very, very high impact as far as visual value to add to different locations at weddings and maybe special events that you have coming up. So again, I'm here with Teleflora. I'm so proud to be part of the Teleflora team because Teleflora continues to advance education and to promote education in the industry because they understand that their member florists and florists out there need these opportunities to stay successful in the days ahead. So sit down, grab yourself a glass of wine or your favorite beverage and enjoy the program. I'm hoping we can share some great ideas with you and that there are things that you can take and use in your shop to really make some money on. We'll get started with the program in just a second. So now we're inside at the beautiful Radnor Valley Country Club in Villanova, Pennsylvania. This country club is historic. It has an old southern mansion that's set on a beautiful golf course. But there was a ballroom added to the mansion probably about 40 years ago to give a bigger facility for, for events and weddings to be had. So we're gonna go into the ballroom now, and as you'll see, the ballroom is relatively a plain canvas. Uh, the color palette is very neutral. You'll see that there's all white tables, white chairs, the white Shavari chairs are here. Classical architecture with the beautiful doors and the openings out to the beautiful patio areas, but even the, the ceiling is relatively plain. There's not a lot going on inside the room. It can be a plus or a minus. It's a plus because it does give us, as florists and as floral designers, a blank canvas to work in. So we really aren't already you know, having to force in another color or force in another style or maybe even an era. It's very neutral and very classic. The minuses may be that you may not have a certain area that works as a great focal area for maybe the guest um, tables or the, the head table or even if there's a banquet table for the entire bridal party. Because again, the room is very neutral. So I think we can, if we visit facilities like this with our brides, suggest to them some things that we could do to make that really just stand out and be a perfect visual site in any wedding reception. So let's just take a look around the room. As you see on two sides of this room, there are these, these glass doors that open up again to the patio area that's outside. Tables are scattered through the room, and you'll see there's lots of room in here now because we have less guests at these weddings and probably will for at least another year or two. So there's a lot of space in here. So, so bringing things in that are bigger scale and take up a little bit more room are really important for us. So I would never suggest for a bride in this room to have something of just all low centerpieces. I think maybe having different centerpieces at different levels would be great. Having the eye ride through the room and the room become much more dynamic with some high centerpieces, some low things, and some medium things in between. That allows guests as they come into the room to not see you know, 15 of the same thing, but to see lots of different levels and, and beautiful florals that all coordinate together and, and accent the tables beautifully. So again, as we go through the room, we're going to figure out what do we want to do here. And we're going to find the most neutral wall. And, and you know, we can take a look up here. We have some of our equipment set up already. But this is the most neutral wall that's in the room. And, and that's what we want to use as the focal area now and to create something for that focal area so that this becomes a really important part of the wedding reception. So in looking at the room, this really is the most neutral wall. And sometimes brides think about, oh, I want to be against the glass windows. I want to have the windows out behind me. But if you think about it for pictures and for photo sake, that's not the best thing. Because if the reception is happening in the afternoon or in the early evening when there's still light from the outside, being backlit with those glass windows is not the best option because their faces will appear dark and everything in front of that will appear much darker. So we may want to be the ones who are the professionals and suggesting to the bride, you might want to have for your decor that neutral wall as your backdrop because all the light comes from different areas and lights up beautifully. 
And that's exactly what I would suggest here at the Radnor Valley Country Club. So we're going to take this wall, and, and if we take this and we use this as our background, we're going to think about, you know, maybe they want it to just be a sweetheart table that, that's up on this very lightly elevated stage area. And for that sweetheart table, we want to create both a beautiful table, but let's suggest that I'm a flower wall to go behind there. Because, you know, they're so in right now, and, and you know, all the brides and grooms are seeing these all over the Internet, on both Facebook and Instagram, and, and all those picture-perfect places that let's say to them, hey, let's invest a little bit of money and have this there. And they may say to you, hey, you know what, I just, I don't have $10,000 for one of those flower walls. I mean, I know they're expensive because, you know, an 8 by 8 wall takes a ton of flowers. But what we've come up with is a great option to suggest to them. And that is to make a flower wall out of an easy mechanic that has partially artificial or permanent botanicals in there and partially fresh flowers so that visually it, it appears the same as an entire wall full of fresh flowers, very lush, very beautiful, beautiful varieties of flowers, but you can actually deliver this to them at a fraction of the cost. So that's the first approach we're gonna take, and let's talk about how we make that. So in, in creating one of these walls, I really did struggle with what the mechanic was that I wanted to use for it. And, and I built them out of chicken wire and wood frames, so we had lots of areas to, to kind of insert greenery through and then put the flowers in that. I have built them out of um, floral foam blocks. I have built them out of, you know, a backstaging area for a trade show that's like a ca stretch canvas that everything kind of gets secured to there. But I found a really great mechanic that worked perfectly for this specific wedding and is going to work perfectly for you. Let's take a look at what it is. This is my secret weapon. It is a four by eight foot sheet by two inches wide piece of basically a foam insulation. We see them in, in any of the home supply stores all the time. It's used for, for insulating walls and cutting between the studs. It's used for insulating attics. But it is a great material. It is inexpensive. It's probably about maybe $30 a sheet, light as can be, which makes it very transportable. But the fact that it has the foam allows us to put like water tubes and picks and wood picks into them and even pierce through very easily. So whatever we need to do to secure this or to get materials in this is really quick and easy and is very forgivable. It can be used over and over again. I'm thinking the same piece of insulation you could probably use maybe 10 to 12 times before you need to replace that with another piece of this insulation. So just so you know, I'm not lying to you, this is the backside of that insulation board. Again, there's many different brands of it available in the market, and, and I usually try to prefer to get one that has a side like the other side of this that we've already seen that has a solid silver or foil background to it. Depending on the materials that you're using, you may want to cover that with something else so that the silver doesn't shine through. But uh, for this first application that we're going to show, the silver is absolutely fine. But I just wanted you to see the other side of this. This actually fits very nicely into the back of a minivan. I know in my shop, we have a Dodge Grand Caravan, and if the seats are just pushed up a little bit, this thing fits perfectly. You can put a stack of them straight in the back of the van. So you don't even need to rent a truck for something like this. It fits in most delivery vehicles that flower shops use. So the first things that we're going to use are greening pins, found in every flower shop, found in almost any flower wholesaler. And this Aspa Decor ribbon, which is that you know wide ribbon that looks just like the Aspa Distro leaves. What we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to secure it to the outside perimeter so that even when guests have a chance to look at this from the side, it still has a very finished side to it. It's a great inexpensive mechanic to hide the perimeter of your flower wall. So we're going to take the ribbon and we're going to just start on an edge and use one piece of the greening pin to just pin that into place. Now, I will say that this goes much easier if you have two people working on this so that one person can hand materials to the second person so that as this is created it goes very quickly. So we're just going to go along and we're going to take the greening pins and again maybe about every foot we're going to put one of the greening pins into the Aspen Decor ribbon and secure it right into the foam on the side. If we now take the other edge that we've wrapped around and pin it on that edge as well too, usually putting the pin perpendicular to the edge of the foam works best. Um, it has less of a chance to ripping away from the up and down movement that the ribbon's already making. So we'll just take another one, 
pop it in there. Another one. And pop it in here. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the back side. And we don't need as many on the back side of it as the front. So maybe just every like two feet is fine to have the greening pins along the back side. So we're going to just use this process and just continue entirely around the perimeter of this 4 by 8 board. So you basically know for one board, you're going to need 8 plus 8 plus 4 plus 4. So that's 24 running feet of the Aspen Decor ribbon to make that happen and completely cover your perimeter. Okay, so for our other wall, we have the boxwood that we're going to use. And, and this is basically the same mechanic. It is, it's all boxwood, and, and I like this one because it seems to have some variegation to the color in it. It's not real flat, so there's some, some lighter green and some, some darker greens in there. But I have found that if you get some of the more inexpensive mats that are the boxwood, if you take some of the Design Master product, like the olive green and the, the bright green, and just lightly hit a couple different places with that, It'll just give it some accent tones to the green that's there and make it look much more like a real living boxwood. So just a little tip if you happen to have a boxwood that doesn't have as much coloration in it. But this is just, this is fabulous. It has some really great highlights and, and does look very real. This is all plastic. So again, as we put things into this, if we put water tubes in there, anything like that, it is not going to harm it at all. And it will not ma you know, maintain that moisture and will not become moldy. So this is a great product to use also. So we're going to take this, and again, the same way, we're going to find a corner and get one of the pins and just use that pin and pin it into place. The first one, of course, is the most important one to get right because the more square you make the first one, the, um, if you have anything that's off angle, the further in a line you go, the more that angle is going to change. So, so really be careful about the first one and make sure it's very square with your board so that you don't have that problem as you get down the line further. And again, it doesn't take many. Maybe I would say just four of these greening pins on the outside edges and maybe three in the middle is, pl is plenty to hold it into place. But you can see how quickly this process goes. And, and really, as you're designing, you'll just get the feel for it. I mean, at first, you really do have to look in and see where that mesh is. But the more you do this, the more you'll get the feel for it and, and just be able to feel the mesh and know where the right placement for any of these pins are. So again, first one might, might take you you know, five minutes to put on. Second one might take you four minutes, but by the time you're going through your, your end of your wall, you can do these in less than a minute and have them pinned into place. Also, for those people that don't have storage, that they can store a four by eight piece of paneling here, these come apart very easily. And just, again, pull the mats, pull the pins out, store them in a smaller box, and just get another piece of insulation when you need to do this over again. So same process, we're gonna continue again. We're going to take that second mat, line it up real nicely. You don't have too much of a space between any of these here. And again, pin, 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 pin. Again, go along the line. You will see a little bit of a geometric pattern if you look very closely. It's, it's hard to totally hide these seams. But what I found that really works great is to just get some extra pieces of this and just randomly put them on the area where they seam together. And then from a distance, it just totally becomes invisible. So just little tips we learned along the way. But again, follow this process, continue with this, and before long, you'll have one big panel of a boxwood wall. So now we have two of the boxwood panels completed. Uh, both of them are up right now, sitting against pipe and drapering. And basically, this is the mechanic that we're going to use to secure it to that framework from the pipe and draping. We're going to start from behind, and I'm going to push this hyacinth stick through the box went in through the styrofoam to the other side and then bring it back out again on this side or vice versa so that I can tie it in the back. This is basically a hyacinth stick with uh, the duct tape here or the eyewinder tape and just a piece of inexpensive number three ribbon that we can use. Usually you want to pick a color that somehow blends in or coordinates with what you have in in the material in the wall already. So let's take a look and see how we can bring this and tie it into the wall. Okay, so as you can see, we've already secured it at the top and at two places on the other panel. But this is the last place to secure. So we're going to take our highest and stake and with the ribbon, and we're going to basically kind of wiggle a hole in the styrofoam and just, just poke it right through. And then come around back. We'll see from the other side. We know we went on the bottom of the pipes. We now need about maybe like three or four inch clearance and find a way and wiggle it in and push it through to the back. Let's go around the back side again. 
secure this to the panel, just cutting off any loose ends. But you'll see when it comes time to take the panels down, it's just a real easy quick cut, and they can be separated from the pipe and draping. So now we're taking some of these beautiful artificial dendrobiums from Pioneer Imports, and we're going to take these and just create a cascading line across the top of the wall. Just something to break up the monotony of the all green and, and to make it just look beautiful, but still very simple in design. To do that, we don't even have to place these into the styrofoam. We can actually just bend these. Each one of these stems is wired. So if we bend these and then give us maybe ourselves about maybe three inches since the foam is two inches thick, give us about three inches and bend it again till we have almost a rectangular shape. This piece can then go in and just slide right on top of the wall. We're going to repeat that over and over again till we have the dendrobiums pretty much cascading like rain all the way across the top of our flower wall. So we're going to just repeat this all the way across the wall. So we have our second one, again, finding the top, pushing the stem back behind the board, and trying to get them about the same height. Work this in as well here, too. And maybe just vary up the actual length that the bottom of the stems are coming to, just to give it a little bit of, of dynamic line so your eye kind of rides up and down as you're going along the wall. Okay, 18 stems of dendrobium orchids from Pioneer Imports later. And look what we have, a beautiful cascading motion along the entire top of the wall. It's not a big addition, but it's something when added, just adds to the drama and adds to just a little bit more liveliness in a square wall that we have here. So we just have one more addition for you. Hang on one minute. So the final addition to the boxwood wall is a catchphrase. And this may be the hashtag that the couple has for their wedding. It may be um, just a phrase that you've suggested to them to make a great photo op. You may decide to use their wedding date and have that on there as well too, or the title of the event. This could be lyrics from their first dance, or a phrase that's actually just very special to the couple that's getting married. So. We're going to take this and place this on the wall, and we basically used a very easy mechanic also. Um, we put hyacinth stakes into the wall and hung the letters from any of the openings in the letters, and then as we place them on the wall, just cut them shorter. You could glue or you glue these pieces on the hyacinth stakes as well too. Whatever mechanic is going to work for you. What we've done was we've had these letters all specially made uh, off of Etsy. We just found a company that custom carves out letters. It's on half inch plywood and it just cuts out and then we just painted them with a couple of coats of Design Master 24 karat gold. Turns out to be a real good look. It shows up very beautifully in pictures. So I've already actually inserted the highest in stakes over here and we're going to take these and we're going to find the spots that we had these worked for, the O's, and we're just going to work that in very closely. So once we have these hanging on the highest in stakes, we're going to take our clippers and just come along, give a clip, and that should stay on the wall very nicely. You may, if it's an area that's going to be more high traffic, you may want to secure them with U-glue on the sticks or actually have them wired and picked into place to put in there. But for this purpose, hanging them on works very well. So we now have a great looking boxwood wall. It's maybe different from other people in our town, but we have something that has a good signature look and something very special for the couple's wedding. Now let's see what we can do with some flowers for a flower wall. Okay, so the next step is start filling it with some flowers. So we've secured some of these beautiful flower mats. They're, they're actually very inexpensive. They have this nice mesh backing to them so that, that you can see there's a network there already and lots of room for, for other things to be poked through. So you can see there's, there's lots, of, lots of openings there. But the basic fill is um, hydrangea and gardenias and peonies in inexpensive flowers that are very much like a neutral tone. These are all not a bright white, but a cream white or a chalk white color. So very neutral. But you'll see there's, there's even, there is a little bit of depth to these, not very much, um, pretty flat, but the hydrangea gives it a little bit more depth. And what we're going to do is we're going to take these and with those same greening pins that we've used before, we're going to secure these onto the 4x8 piece of insulation that we have here already. 
So just using our greening pins again, we're going to take the pins and just insert them right through that, that network of plastic that we have, that screen of plastic, and pin these flower mats onto the styrofoam to begin the flower wall. I find it's easiest to go along one edge first, and, and um, even though the, this flower wall will be put um, vertically, I'm working on it horizontally because, you know, I'm only six feet tall, so it's hard for me to reach the eight-foot spots and, and work. So we put it on its side so we have all of this done at least, and it makes it much easier to work with. So again, just mosey along, one pin after another. When you have the entire top edge pinned in place, get another set of pins. We're going to go through the middle and then go through the bottom here as well. So we're just going to, again, work our way through the floral materials, and you can feel with your fingers where that mesh background is to this. So you make sure you just pop your pins through there. You don't need many, maybe only three or four in the middle segment here, because it's really just to secure this onto the foam insulation that we have. And at the end, we're going to find, there we go, find it, put it there, and then the bottom edge. Find the edge, pin through, and you see how quickly this goes. I love these styrofoam boards. Um, you know, again, they're, they're so lightweight. And, and the fact that they are that, even if you get a flower wall like this done and complete to this point, you can maybe store it above a refrigerator or on a very top shelf to get it out of your way so it's not taking up a lot of room. So here is flower mat number two. So we're actually going to be very fortunate because these actually finish up a wall very nicely. But these easily can be cut. Um, if you remember that we saw the mesh on the back, if you just follow the straight lines and you cut three inches off, if that's what you need, or four inches off, whatever that is, you can cut these to customize them to any size styrofoam board that you have. The four by eight is going to work perfectly for this. We have beautiful, beautiful floral materials. And again, we're just going to build and build and build. It's going to be four going up. It's going to be three going down. And before you know, we'll have a full flower wall. Okay, so with the magic of video, there's one panel complete already. Again, this was basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 panels, so it didn't take that long. But look how lush this looks already. When you get up close, you'll see there's a little bit of room between them, but none of the silver actually shows through this. It, this is a mat that pretty much covers the entire area. So again, this is one panel. We're going to do another panel to give us the 4 by 8 wall, and then we're going to show you how to secure them in an easy mechanic so that they're not going to go anywhere and they stay exactly where you put them. This is the mechanic that we're going to use to hold these two panels up in place. We have basically, it's just the, the framework of pipe and draping. It's the, the metal base to give it some security and some stability. We have the one eight foot pole. We're going to use the ones that have the slots in them so we can actually put a cross beam between the two if we want and across the top. But we're going to center both of these poles in the center of both of those panels that we have. After we get that up and secure it in place, we're basically going to just poke a hole through, right through the foam on either side, and put a ribbon with the stick. I'll show you how to do that, but we're going to put a ribbon through a stick through that and then just tie it from the back. So it's an easy mechanic that secures these to, to these very nicely. And then we're going to make sure we put some sandbags on the back to weight it so that we know this isn't going to want to tilt. If there's any, you know, if it's outside and there's any wind happening or even inside and somebody passes by, you know, and, and maybe rubs it with the shoulder. So again, the weight on the back is going to keep it in place. But this is about as simple as a mechanic as you can get to make sure that these panels stand up straight and can be used anywhere, not even up against a wall. Okay, now we have the one panel stood up vertically, and, and you can see how light they are. We can just pick them up, move them into place, and center them right by the pole for the pipe and draping frame that we have. We're going to stand up a little bit straighter. I can tell that here we have. Um, and now we're just going to try to actually secure this to the pole. Okay, so, so for this part of the mechanic, I've basically taken two long hyacinth sticks, and I've taken just some inexpensive number three ribbon and wrapped it with some uh, floral tape onto the end of each one of these floral stakes. We're going to look at the flower wall and find the center. And if we look at the, the base of the pipe and draping, we can see that there's actually a notch in there that tells us this is where that pole is going to run right up the center. So maybe at two different places, maybe here and maybe up here, we're going to secure that with this ribbon. And to do that, we basically go on one side of what we think the center line is and just poke right through the foam 
and on the other side of where other side of where we think that is and find the styrofoam and poke right through the foam and then come on up and let's look around the back and see what happened there so now if we look on the back side we see how the the stakes have come all the way through and we're just going to continue to pull them through and get the ribbon all the way through and if we look at the front again real quickly make sure that the ribbon is which it is it's kind of nestled in between the flowers so it's almost invisible again and then come around the back and here we're going to cut these off the stakes and just tie this into place and if we do this again here and up higher maybe at this level and then the same thing two of these secures on the second panel we could push those two panels together and it's a great stable flower wall and here we have the basic eight foot by eight foot flower wall puts together very easily all the same material but look how lush it is already you will notice like when I look at something like this I see that seam in the middle even though it's really subtle you do see it and what we want to do now is just to kind of top layer this with some other material we have one of our educational partners and it's Pioneer Imports and they have some great peony bushes and hydrangea bushes that we can cut apart and start to layer on top of this and and that does start to hide the um, the lines that you see in between the panels but also it starts to give the flower wall much more dimension it becomes three-dimensional has much more depth to it and makes it that much more real looking as opposed to a one flat panel surface so let's get some of those bushes from Pioneer and see what they look like as we add them into the wall so if you haven't worked with Pioneer before this is their catalog it's a great catalog and there's so many selections in here from different qualities of flowers and and different colors um, the one peony bush we have picked in particular is this one and there's actually I think 16 different colors of this peony bush for your selection even in the white category I believe there's about five different shades of white and we picked two we didn't pick the bright white but we picked chalk which is the one that's closest to me right now and and I do love it and look at the beautiful roughly centers that are in the centers of those flowers we also have bridal white which is the one that's a little bit more cream in tone but has a very slight blush pink towards the outside and just that little bit of tonation difference is enough to give you more interest to put into your flower wall so we're going to take these and we're basically going to cut them up into individual stems and they're a nice fine wire on there it's not too heavy so they're going to be a very easy poke into the styrofoam base that we have in the flower wall so let's cut them apart and add them in and see if we can make the illusion of all of those lines and the seams between the panels completely disappear all right so we've taken some of the blossoms and we've cut them off the bush we've actually removed the foliage as well too because we want to really kind of stay in the uh, white and cream tone and not have too many interruptions with the green or the foliage of these blossoms interrupting that so if we take these and we're going to cut them to about maybe six to eight inches each they have a nice you know wire stem and we're going to basically try to start working these and look how easily they go right into the flower wall we're going to work these into the flower wall and leave them a little bit higher than all of the rest of the materials that we have on the wall not sticking out from it they still the base of the flower has to touch the other flowers but if we allow them to rise a little bit higher it again gives us that depth that we were talking about earlier so the more we put again in especially towards the center the more we put in there and maybe even some at a little bit different angles than others and some maybe in groupings of two other ones singly put other ones in three but we're really going to very randomly have these first covering the major seam and then spread throughout the wall in both directions so that there's good coverage and again just another layer to this beautiful flower wall so we probably need I would say about maybe like 40 of each of those flowers to completely get good coverage on this flower wall so let's take a break get them in there and then we'll show you the next step so I have a whole cluster of the ones we've cut in my hand and again just one other and you'll see this is if you just cut them off the bush as is you'll see that they have some foliage and all of these just slide off very nicely they just basically slide off there I would save these just put them in, in a box for something because you never know when you might need to have coverage and just need some foliage or some leaves for that but for this purpose we don't need them for the wall so we're going to take them off and save them for later you'll see each one of these stems is approximately six to eight inches long I do think in an application like this don't worry about the back of the wall as much as long as it's not going to be seen from another angle if these stick out two three inches it's okay it's better to have them too long than too short because you really want to make sure that you have them in that wall and that they're very secure.
So now we've added about maybe 24 stems off the bushes of each color of the chalk and the bridal white from Pioneer Imports. And look at just the dimension that that starts to add to the wall. It's very subtle, but it keeps it from looking flat and allows your eye to ride, even just to catch this little bit of pink here and move and maybe catch it here again, and then maybe find another one over here. And your eye just kind of rides through the wall and gives it a little bit of rhythm just by the placement of something different in various spots throughout the wall. There are the things that when we as floral designers use our, our knowledge base of the elements and principles of design, it's understanding like the principle of rhythm that, that allows us to make something very flat, something more interactive with whoever's looking at it because of the way we place materials and allow the eye to move from one place to the other in the flower wall. So basically this is the, the finished part of the artificial wall and this is something we could rent out over and over again. But for very special events and for people with a little bit more budget, we like to then suggest let's add some fresh flowers on top of what we have here because that really makes it so much more beautiful. It actually makes it fragrant. And your eye really cannot tell the difference from a certain viewpoint between what's artificial and what's fresh. So adding those fresh flowers in there is just a key element. If you can talk your customers into it, it's something you won't regret and something that'll make your work even more popular. So the first fresh element that we're going to add to our artificial wall is these beautiful clusters of fresh hydrangea. This is the equivalent of one hydrangea head that's broken apart and we put the different bracts of hydrangea into different water tubes with a spike on the bottom. This spike is what's going to allow you to just penetrate into that wall very nicely and have it secure in place. But as you'll notice, it actually is a different color, subtle, but a different color from what's here already. This actually has a little bit more green hue to it, which is the best way I could explain it. And, and that little bit of green hue is going to, again, make this whole wall feel like it's fresh product. So we're going to take these and start to insert them and just pop them in, in random places, into the wall, and allow it, again, maybe just riding a little bit above the other product that's there to give it just a little bit more depth. And next, we're going to change up the tonation just a little. We're going to add these beautiful roses there, classic pointed rose shape. And this variety is called Soul. And you'll see that they basically are almost white, but some of them as they open get a little bit more of a peach tone to them, a very blushy peach color and ivory tones. And even the shadowing inside those roses is just beautiful. So adding this into the wall is really going to be a beautiful addition. Having just a little bit more of this subtle shading as a difference in here adds variety. And it actually falls under the principle of contrast, where there's just a slight contrast, but it's just enough to take your eye and to allow you to see that there is something different inside this wall that's all basically white. So this is our completed flower wall. As you can see, we've added about 75 stems of the beautiful soul roses, and we've allowed them to open so they're really a nice full body rose and take up some volume, but also give you a good bit of color there and difference in color. We've added about 10 stems of hydrangea, which equated to about 50 of the water tubes full of the hydrangea bracts as we broke them apart. Again, scattering them through the wall, making some very strategic placements with covering the seams, and just allowing your eye to just ride through this beautiful, textural, fluffy flower wall. Something like this becomes a very important part of the wedding. The basic mechanic, the silk part of the wall, you can save and use over and over again. Just make sure that as each event is over, you pull out all the fresh products and make sure you get the water tubes out of there so that there's no moisture left there that might mold the material that you have. I found it to be a great, I guess, tool also, is to get mattress bags and to store these in mattress bags because they're big enough that one 4x8 panel can just slip right into and that'll keep all the dust off them and maybe even any moisture as well too. So now that we have the flower wall, let's see if we just add a sweetheart table in front of this, how we can make this all even more picture perfect. So now we're getting there. The addition of just a simple sweetheart table, two play settings, two chairs, a beautiful garland that 
picks up on some of the flowers that we've used on the wall already. And again, this also is a combination of the artificial from Pioneer and fresh product, but has the addition of the eucalyptus in there too. Just that eucalyptus and, and the different uh, forms of the petals, we have the silver dollar eucalyptus and the um, parvifolia eucalyptus, and the different shapes of those petals give it some interest, but also the fragrance of the eucalyptus mixed in there with some of those other florals is something that's very beautiful and, and seems very relaxing to have on the table. I like things that are more asymmetrical. So because the wall is so square, having this on the table, this garland kind of serpentine up from one side, not touching the floor on one side, but serpentining through the table, cascading down, and then curving your eye back towards the center again, gives another movement to this entire look and this entire photo or area that the bride and groom are going to sit at. The simple addition of some beautiful, heavy, weighted candlesticks with some glass vases with column candles inside, again, add to the romance. And it's details like this that allow us to really excel as being professionals. We need to be the ones to suggest these to our customers and to say to them, hey, let's just go a little bit more. Let's just go a little bit more. At first, they may resist a little bit, and it's usually only because of budget reasons. But the more you talk about the romance that this creates and the fact that we're going to have something just beautifully cascading over and down the table with this beautiful handmade garland, the more you talk about it, the more you can sell it, and the more they're going to have a need for it. That's really one of the secrets in sales is to create a sale, you need to create a need. So nobody needs this garland. It doesn't function other than something that's just aesthetically beautiful. But when you think about the need for that moment to be perfect and the way it's captured on film, that's the need that you can create and then make the sale for a luxurious item like this as an add-on sale to the wedding. So there's always room for a little bit more. So why not talk your customer into a chandelier? This is something that was just easily purchased off eBay. It was not that expensive. This one was actually less than $150. And I liked it because of the, the tonation of the crystal. It has a little bit of an ivory tone to it, which picks up on the rest of the room, but would be very neutral to use in almost any venue. We actually had an iron stand made for this, and we've just sleeved that with the sleeving that we've used for pipe and draping to, to cover the actual iron and the extension cord that goes up and around the back of the wall. But you know what, look at something like this. Wow, that makes a difference, doesn't it? People are gonna to wanna to come up all night long and, and not only take pictures, but they're gonna say, who did your flowers? And that's really the name of the game. We all have flowers to buy. We all buy from the same wholesalers. We all have some of the same product to use, but it's how we use it and the ideas we use and the other elements we bring into our, our whole look that make it ours and give us a brand that we can promote. So this is what I would call a picture perfect moment. Suggest these to your customers. Don't underestimate what they'll go for and see if you can be part of that world that becomes Instagram famous, Facebook wide, and just wedding pictures that your customers will enjoy for years and years to come. And every time they open up those books, they're gonna talk about how wonderful you were as the florist. So I hope you've enjoyed this program. I hope that during this time, I was able to share with you lots of ideas for things you can do and take back to your shop and make your own and maybe use the mechanic as we've talked about or change it or tweak it so that it becomes yours so that you can sell beautiful additions to your weddings and events and you can be the florist that everybody in your town is talking about. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you Teleflora for your sponsorship. And again, it's my honor to be a florist like you and to do a presentation like this. Thank you. Bye now.